Hello and welcome to Crow Forest Reviews. So here at Crow Forest Reviews, we have something of a tradition of looking at the same franchise of movies year after year until we run out of material. And so, in keeping with tradition, let's run out of material on our current franchise with Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2. Incidentally, this is the movie I thought I was reviewing last year, but it turned out to be that weird Thanksgiving-Christmas hybrid instead. Whoops. But oh well, better late than never. This is Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2. So the special opens with a snowflake falling through the sky of the Hundred Acre Wood until it's snatched out of the air by Tigger who declares that it needs more salt. Needs more salt. <laughs> well, that makes sense. So anyway, Pooh and his friends are all gathered together on a cliff top, telling Christopher Robin what they want for Christmas. Because I guess Christopher Robin is the stand-in for Santa in this universe. Dear Santa, well, guys, you've been awfully good this year. What kind of presents are you going to ask for? Oh, wait, no, he's asking them what they want from Santa. So, I guess this makes him a stand-in for Mall Santa. Wow, he couldn't even afford a fake beard. This Mall Santa sucks. So anyway, everyone tells Christopher Robin what they want for Christmas, with Pooh interjecting that everyone needs to be given a pot of honey, just in case a certain someone comes to visit them. Could Santa also bring Rabbit a small smackerel of honey? <laughs> Just in case certain guests drop in. And a jar of honey for Eeyore, too? Perhaps Piglet would also like a few parts of a... Um, of honey? Wow. Way to make it all about you there, Boo. So anyway, after they've all put in their requests, Christopher Robin sends the letter off to the North Pole, by letting go of it and letting the wind carry it. Um, that really doesn't seem like the best system. What if the wind dies down or changes direction? And what if the letter gets caught in a tree or soaked through by the snow? Doesn't this universe have a post office? Even Whoville has a post office. Jerry duty, jerry duty, jerry duty, blackmail, pink slip, cane letter, eviction notice, jerry duty, <laughs> Um, anyway, cut to Pooh's house, where Pooh is showing off his Christmas tree to Piglet. Hello, Piglet. How do you like my Christmas tree? Wow, that's just pathetic. I mean, I've got a real Christmas tree behind me. Wait, what happened to my Christmas stock footage? Yeah, see? I've got a real fake Christmas tree behind me. Wait, what's going on? Uh, 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 stop it! Stop! Uh, shoot! My green screen appears to be broken. Uh, technical difficulties. You know, come to think of it, this is even sadder. So anyway, Piglet has come over because he's concerned that Pooh never added a gift request of his own to the list. And so, Pooh and Piglet come up with an overly complicated plan of retrieving the letter and adding a gift request. Hey, wait a minute! What does he mean that Pooh never asked for a present? He asked for honey pots for everyone in town! And before you think, oh, well, he was just too busy selflessly thinking of other people and trying to get more stuff for them to even think of his own needs, um, no. Those were clearly all for him. Even if it wasn't painfully obvious in the intro what he intended those for, which it was, it is an established fact in this universe that none of the others like honey. So, yeah, he was just trying to get extra presents. So anyway, after a little body horror slash, I think that was supposed to be funny, Pooh and Piglet take off in their jury-rigged cold air balloon in order to retrieve the letter. 
And wouldn't you know it, they just happened to crash land in the exact same spot the letter did. Wow, this postal system is terrible. It's even worse than ours. So anyway, Pooh and Piglet decide to take the letter to Rabbit's house, as he's the most likely to have a pencil for editing purposes. Because rabbits are well known for always having pencils? Damn straight we are! Always come prepared! But it turns out that Rabbit is currently under siege by an army of particularly festive bugs. A Christmas carolers. <laughs> Wait, just what the hell kind of bugs are those? They look like little dinosaurs. Anyway, Rabbit defeats the army of bugs, and he gets the pencil for Pooh. But upon editing the letter, everyone goes a little crazy and starts asking for fancier and fancier stuff. But on the plus side, they are asking for stuff for each other, so that's nice. And four snowshoes for Tigger, so he can bounce six times higher. Hey, I like this guy's mathematicals. No, spring-powered snowshoes, so he can bounce halfway to the moon. Thanks, Rabbit. And ten pots of honey for Pooh. Eleven. It's the season of giving. <laughs> this is going to be the bestest Christmas of all. So Pooh and Piglet send off the letter again but the wind switches direction, because that's what wind does. But I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure the letter knows its way. Oh, I'm certain the letter knows its way. So anyway, Rabbit and Tigger wake up Gopher, for some reason. Mm, oh, I gotta say, as old as say, Nick better appreciate this. Tell me where you want it! Over here! Over here! Perfect! Wait, they needed him to move a tree? Gophers can't do that! I'm starting to think that the logic of this Christmas special isn't very sound. And then they decorate the tree. And of course, Eeyore is elected to be the tree topper. Poor Eeyore. Though, on the plus side, that is the most festive tree topper I've ever seen. I need an Eeyore tree topper. And then the letter blows back to them. Because of course it does. And so, Pooh decides that in order to save Christmas, he's going to have to dress up as Santa Claus and deliver the presents himself. Ho, 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 gasp, Santa Claus. Hey, wait a minute, he can afford a fake beard. So anyway, Pooh delivers the presents, but unfortunately, they suck. I can bounce the snow! <laughs> what a present! Just what I always wanted! <laughs> Definitely not what I always wanted. So Rabbit, Tinker, and Eeyore go to confront Santa, 
But after he crashes his sleigh, they see that it's really Pooh, and they appreciate what he was trying to do. And so, Pooh decides to set off for the North Pole himself to hand deliver the letter to Santa. But he doesn't quite make it, and he has to come back. But he is gone long enough to give his friends time to realize that being together with friends is more important than getting stuff. And so, they all learn the true meaning of Christmas. Just in time to get presents anyway. Because of course Christopher Robin already knew what the letter said, and he just got them the stuff. Making the entire conflict of the movie entirely pointless. Yeah. So that was Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2. How was it? That was really good. As Christmas specials go, this one is short, sweet, and to the point. And of course, Pooh and his friends are always great. So if you, like the rest of the world, are getting really tired of a Charlie Brown Christmas, try this one instead. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, here's your kid-friendly clip of the day. Take this! Take that! Take some of these!